Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another wonderful episode of the Bill Burt Pod Cast. No, it stayed on you for the whole thing. <laughs> After you said Bert. Um, what's going on, everybody? It is July 5th. Happy birthday, America. You fucking lost Great Britain. I fucking kicked your ass and you never came knocking again. Actually, didn't they? They came again in 1812. This is the best part of this podcast for me is I'm going through the news. I'm looking at sports and immediately I go, I got to ask Bill. Oh, nice. Ask me. I don't know shit about American history. I don't know shit about women and I don't know shit about sports, but it doesn't stop me from talking. <laughs> Having an opinion. Did by you, the way, by what? the way, you fucking talked about it enough. I went out and I got one. <laughs> I'm going to do a taste test. Bert Kreischer on the last one brought up this fucking thing that I passed over like a fucking, this thing in my world was like, uh, it was like me looking at a redheaded chick, you know? <laughs> that I don't even see it. It's just, it's just a reminder. Of <laughs> I've got so many Heath bars. I don't even know what this is. Not, I'm not insulting Reddit. It's because I am also orange popsicle color. I was just like, I don't need can more of that. Me, I have that at home. Me, can you bring me a Heath bar in from the tour bus? You have one on the tour bus? I have. I want to see what this is all about because I brought this home and my wife went up, went into falsetto when she saw it. She's like, you got a Heath bar? I love these bars. I'm like, what the fuck is with these things? So here we go. All right. Taste test. The official Izod taste test. We're getting some money on this podcast. Good crunch. Good flavor. A little bit of butter. Don't be insecure. Don't be insecure. Let me, let me enjoy it. Let me make up my own mind. Ooh. That's tasty. Yeah, right. This is like a good cigar where... There's the initial flavors. I hate cigar fucking you know, when, they, when they do the reviews. The second they lay it, hmm, hmm, I'm, I'm taking, tasting some cinnamon. I hate that shit. You're tasting some smoke, you fucking asshole. These, these are delicious. It's like a candy bar for grown These are under fucking rated, and these will pull your fillings out. <laughs> yes, they will. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Woo, I don't know if I can eat a whole one of these. That's why I like to break it, Bill, and leave it on a plate in the middle of the kitchen and just go by and have a little snack throughout the day. You know what Italians call that? You know what they what? call you? You're a govan. What's that? I learned that from Verzi. That's that guy who's just eating to eat, just walking by, shoving shit in his face. You're a fucking govan. <laughs> Hope I'm saying that right. No disrespect to Italians out there. All right? I love the saying. Sopranos and understood why it was offensive all at the same time. It would be great if you were saying a racial slur and unknowingly. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past it. And then Heath had to apologize. Locked in it. All right, you know what? I sign off on that. They're fucking difficult. You can't, you can't have a conversation when you have one, though. So I'll tell you what happened. We were in Oklahoma City on tour, and they had have – you, have you played at Spokane, the Spokane Comedy Club, or at Tacoma? I've, I've done colleges. So there. the club there, the owners have an array of chocolates and treats and snacks. Like the whole green room is set can up you, for- Can you say array again? An array of snacks and treats. Every <laughs> candy bar, every, every, it's like Bobby Kelly and my wet dream of a green room. They got arcades, great clubs, great clubs. And so we're in Oklahoma City and they got all the candy bars. So I grab all the candy bars, I lay them on the couch, I take a picture of them, everything they got in the room, and I said, what's your top five, and then what's your never pick, right? What's the one you'll never pick? And so I put my top five, and it was Heath, Snickers, uh, I, th I forget, it was whatever was there, but my never pick was Milk Duds. I just write Milk Duds, right? Oh, Milk Duds. And it, the only time you ever had them was Halloween, and they came in that little box, and it was fine. You just, you just ate them to eat them. Like, you got four, like rabbit shit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So, uh, so I go to sleep. We get have a few pops. Go to sleep. Wake up the next morning. Milk Duds is trending on Twitter. It's trending because everyone is trashing Milk Duds based off my tweet. And then Milk Duds gets in the mix. Milk Duds, Hershey's, Kit Kat, Skittles, Jolly Ranchers. All their Twitter feeds start lighting me up. What the fuck's wrong with Milk Duds? 
Oh, are they all in business together? It's all under the Hershey's umbrella. And you so fucked wrote, with one of the big families in Candy. That's yeah. what happened. That, then, was, that wasn't even a New York crime family. That was Chicago. And then I, I came back and I said, I know what you're doing, Milk Duds. You had to have your two big brothers, Kit Kat and Hershey's, and your little sister, Jolly Rancher, come after me. And That's <laughs> right. That's like the fucking weak act on the roster. And they go, listen, you got to book Milk Duds or you're never going to get Burt Kreischer again. All right, we'll give him a weekend. The, the week after, the, the Super Bowl weekend. You got to do better than that. Yeah. So, yeah, so, but Heath was my number one. Uh, we, we don't have any, all we have is Hershey's on the, on the bus. Hershey's, delicious. Yeah, so we're I like the to- almonds, but you know, sometimes I like the surface area of the original milk chocolate. I just feel like I'm getting more. And just because there's almonds, all of a sudden, you know, the square footage of the candy bar goes way down. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So, yes, I wonder if there's... I, I don't think you like what I was saying. Just that I wonder, no, but I wonder like, if those yeah. almonds save you cal- calories. Huh? I wonder if those almonds save you calories because it's less chocolate. I don't know, man, but I think you're this close to curing COVID. <laughs> Dude, that is like some weed talk. Hey, man, do you like think... Because there's an almond there instead of more chocolate, like you could eat this and still have a flatter stomach than if you ate the bigger one. Um, I was disappointed with the amount of people that don't share, because I, I saw that, 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 that Twitter thing. I mean, it was all over it. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, why is Milk Duds trending? When I, then when I found out they weren't in trouble, then I posted the Denzel fucking whatever, the people always sorry. Um, I was pissed the amount of people, I was disappointed the amount of people that actually enjoy a Three Musketeer, a Three Musketeer bar, yeah. which is the Cadillac of a Milky Way. It's just, it's just, it's just all nougat. Yeah, you got to be a big nougat fan if you're an old Milky Way. Did we have a, I've looked up nougat before on my own podcast. Milky Way is for like middle, like, like grade school kids, grade school kids, like, Milky Way and Three Musketeer. You graduate. I thought it was for poor kids that couldn't afford the peanuts in a Snickers bar. No, eighth grade is when you turn into Snickers. You're like, I'm gonna graduate to Snickers. And then when Snickers you're in your 50s, like the I Rock Z. That's the I Rock Z, and the other that that one there is just like the fucking standard Milky Way's a standard Camaro, the rally sport. So then, so then a Heath bar is like a Jaguar. A Heath, well, a Heath bar is a bit of a sleeper. So I would put this thing. This is the Mercedes-Benz AMG wagon. Oh, you wow. Look at that dad with his three kids, and all of a sudden, it just fucking, you know, those AMG engines, you, you, like, you can actually meet the guy if you go to Germany who builds it. Like, he autographs the engine. Yeah, yeah. They oh, don't yeah. do that on a Chevy or a Ford, unless it's Carroll Shelby. <laughs> he puts his name right on the dashboard. That's my dick and balls under the hood there, freckles. <laughs> Yeah, I was, uh, we, we had started that conversation last week talking about candy bars, posted it, and I was like, oh, shit, this thing's going fucking viral. Hey, can you tell people about your amazing tour bus? I mean, I'm seeing a wet bar. I'm seeing a marble fireplace. Yeah, well, we upgraded. We got, a, we got this one from Ron White. This was Ron's. That's amazing. <laughs> that looks like a double wide, dude. Yeah, no, this is, I'm in quarantine. What's the matter? Uh, I just got off the road, and so quarantining for a few days until I go back to my family. Aren't you supposed to stay for 14 days? Uh, no, not really, because I, uh, I got corona tested, and so it came back negative, and so I'm just going to give myself a couple more days and pop Nice. Up. Yeah. It's nice to see a comic can actually do the road and be responsible and not come back with COVID. It's, we all tested. We all tested negative. Uh, seven, eight of us on the tour bus. Zero. Let me, I, I'm not... I'm not trying to start beef with any of the, my buddies who got COVID. Come on, you got the guns out. I want to hear you talking some shit here. Let me tell Look you something, that. Shab, Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was just, it was zero contact. It's, it, we were 100% zero contact, like obsessive. Everyone had masks on at all times. You do your spot. We, I was very, we were very- So it can be done. It can be but done. If you and, love your fan base more than you love yourself, like those two angels. Those two angels doing the Lord's work, trying to bring the country together with fist bumps. 
So fighter and the kid, then then you you could actually have a problem. Fucking <laughs> Brian Callen. If you fist bumped me or <laughs> and then he goes, ha, how did I not know that it would be right here? <laughs> oh, is that what he said? Uh, he goes, I'm only making fun because I know that they're young enough and they're both they're both in phenomenal shape, particularly uh, Brian Callen. If we could just talk about Brian and his physique, because I know that he's sick right now. So somebody has to be talking about his amazing physique. Each I mean, of those guys is an ab workout for him. One years old. To still be like, I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, 61, great eyelids. Have you seen his eyelids lately? No, I haven't. Oh, he got some work done, and it looks nice. He looks really young right you here. Cut, edit that out. Don't tell him that he got plastic surgery. Uh, no, Bill, it's very, everyone knows it. It was, he was wearing sunglasses on his podcast. <laughs> like he had just gotten into a title fight and defended the belt. You know what? That's a Hollywood fight right there. You get your eyes done. You come in, do the press conference with your shades on. Oh, Callan's the best. If you, had to, if you had to do one elective, uh, oh, Jesus, your eyes just lit up. One elective <laughs> procedure for looks that you feel would actually, that they have the procedure down enough. Because you don't, you know, sometimes people get their eyes done and they look weird for a while and then they live with that. It's going to settle. It's like, is it going to settle or am I just going to get used to the new you? That yeah. weird sort of like, uh, like this is like as white as me, but like you actually have pigment, you know? Um, what is the one plastic surgery procedure that you think would actually enhance your career and that they, and, and, and it's got to be a combo and they actually know how to do it. They practice on enough fucking faces. It's got to be your face. I, I, I mean, obviously I go with hair transplants. I would love to do fucking like Joel McHale style hair transplants. His hair Why transplants. are you outing everybody? He wrote about it in his book. He talks about it openly. He oh. talks about it totally openly. He has is, no is problem. Is what you're going to do for the whole podcast? Just yeah, Oprah, Oprah Winfrey has a plastic vagina. Brett, what are you doing? Oh, she, she talked about that on The Tonight Show. Oh, okay. Then I get dragged into this shit? <laughs> no, his hair is awesome. Like, I, I would love to get... It would be cool to have one last run of hair. Like... Just like fucking just up and- I understand that. Let me ask you this. One last run of hair. What haircut are you going with? Your final week of hair. I mean, if I, if you, I, I would definitely, I would just go straight long. I, I, I want hair down to here. I want to pull it back. I want to put it in a ponytail. I want to get up out of the water. I want it to be everywhere. What are, we are we talking yoga instructor? Or are we talking a keyboard player in a metal band? No, we're, we're talking sidekick in point break. One of Patrick Sazie's sidekicks, that long hair. Oh, so you got the little highlights. Yeah, highlights, and, and it's just uh, like kind of curly. shaking your head no so the chicks catch it in the corner of their eye. I see what you're doing. Flying down the highway in a Jeep with it just going everywhere. I think if I had, long, I think if I had a full head of long hair, I would actually want to work out more. <laughs> I love when you talk about your hair just going everywhere. You can't control <laughs> it, man. You're, you're like a Mustang out there. I can't, okay, here's the question. If you could give Bobby Kelly one style of hair, what would you give Bobby? Start from scratch. Oh, Bobby, okay. I, I go straight pompadour. And he's losing the weight, but he has to yeah, keep the weight on. Like he has pounds, to keep right? the weight on, and he has to be in, like, some sort of rockabilly slash Don Ho cover band, and he's got the straight up, like, fucking up and down like that. Yeah. Mutton chops, little too hipstery. Yeah. I want people to think that he's not doing it ironically. Yeah. Bobby used to have, Bobby had a haircut I never saw a man have. When that? I first came in, yeah, I wish he was on this right now. I love when he talks <laughs> about young, when he talks about young Bobby, that's my favorite thing. He goes, I was fucking gorgeous. Like he talks about himself like he was like a, like a, I don't know, like a runway model. He had this fucking hair, dude. No, you're not going to find it. You know, if you're looking for a picture, you can't. I don't think there's any evidence of it. This is like early 90s when oh. I first met him. He had, he had long black, oh, he's got, okay, long black hair. And it was yeah. all like corkscrewed. Oh. Yeah, it was like the haircut they didn't have in Color Me Bad. Like he's somehow had, they missed the boat. He's had great, his, he had great hair. I remember when he shaved it, I, I was shocked that he was losing his hair. Oh yeah, he 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 uh, 
Did he pick up? No. He didn't, he didn't pick up. Yeah. He had like a uh, – yeah, he looked like a wrestler. Yeah, I was shocked when he shaved it. He was shaved it with Frosty, I think. He was, it was with Frosty. Yeah, Frosty, Frosty shaved his head. He had to put his head over the tub of the toilet. I think the toilet. Just fucking – I remember Bobby was saying I was sitting there. I was going, wait, 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 wait. All right, all right do it, do it. And I got to tell you something. Ballsiest thing I ever saw that fucking guy do. When after he shaved his head, he went right down to the cellar the next night. He had a hat on. He sat down and just took it off. And oh. just, he just got it over with. It was unreal. He took his hat off. You know, like when someone did a killer joke on Def Jam and it looked like the sea parted in the crowd? That's what happened. Really? Oh, yeah. And they pounded and pounded and pounded. And uh, Esty was the one who finally made him leave. And it was such a good one, I'm not going to repeat it. Why? What was it? I, I can't. I don't want he, he gets enough shit. We all get enough shit. Fuck yeah. these trolls. I'm not going to help them out. Fuck these trolls. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, I would like Bobby to have Michael Hutchins' hair, the lead singer from NXS. Oh, man. What a well, rock that guy, guy had that a guy great was. fucking head of hair. That poor guy, man. Lost his sense of smell and saw sense of taste. And, taste. and that's yeah, why he, he hit his head. <clears throat> and he was a pussy hound, you know? That's two big ones to lose. <laughs> You're a pussy hound. I'm texting Bobby right now. Dude, that, yeah, he got punched. Right, that hat is like a Division II head football coach. Bill. Undersized white these linemen. Visors. These visors are so much better than the thin, rounded ones. These are those old school, thick, good visors. I love those things, but I can't, I can't wear them during the day. I can wear it at night. If I wore it during the day, the level. Look at how fucking white I am. I have the, the light from outside. Look at this shit. I mean, this is just like, you know, this is Mount Rushmore level whiteness <laughs> that I'm bringing to the table. Look at how dark I am. Look at, Look at the difference. <laughs> um, I gave up. Uh, I gave up trying to get any sort of color. Um, my senior year, my senior year, right before my senior prom, um, I I went to a fucking cookout, and I took my shirt off and had on Larry Bird short shorts, and just sat in the sun for four hours drinking. And then I remember I had to put my clothes back on and then go to work. And I went to a warehouse and I remember driving over and all of a sudden my torso just felt like you literally could have fried an egg on it. Yeah. And I came in and everybody's looking at me like, dude, what the fuck? And I said, yeah, dude, I think I burned myself. I picked my shirt up and the whole warehouse went, oh. <laughs> so this was like, like I think, a week before the prom. So oh, yeah. I went through like three, four days of agony. And then by the time the prom came along, I felt so bad for my day. Dude, I was like at night, the night before the prom, you know, when I don't, you've had a level of sunburn like this, but you're in bed, you're shivering. You're yep. <laughs> like going through that shit. I had blisters on my fucking shoulders. Peeling. I mean, I, I look like, I look like an old person's foot. So, needless to say, I didn't, I didn't try to do anything that <laughs> prom night. Um, but I just drank a lot. I remember that. I drank a lot, and I just kind of I, I kind of got through the pain, you know? Wait, Joe lip. Namath used to, used, to, you know, used to drink back in the day when his knees were bugging him. Really? Yeah, I watched this great documentary on him on, um, on uh, HBO uh, Plus. There's really? a killer one. It's from, like, 2012, so there's some people in there that are no longer with us and you get like their perspective, but he's really, really open and really talks about his drinking. And, um, you know, remember that time when he said to that woman on ESPN, I'm so, so bad with names. Um, when he's like, I really want to kiss you when he did that whole thing. Yeah. She was cool as hell. They, they asked her like, what did you think? She goes, I was like, I am seeing a really great man in a really bad moment. And she goes, that's why I never talked about it publicly until now, which I thought was really cool sort of old school yeah. thing. You know what I mean? I mean, if that happened now, they would just, you know, all the feminists would just be all over that being like, Oh, they destroy him. They jump he all over. He assaulted her and he needs the ah, and here's half a sentence from a DM 
<laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I, you look at everyone getting lit up right now. Like, uh, do you see Kaepernick? No, I don't, I don't watch that shit. Because what people, individuals are doing, what Fox News and CNN are doing, they're taking information and then they're cutting it up like a slice of bread and they're taking out the shit that, that doesn't have their, you know what I mean? My thing is yeah. if somebody's like, hey, like the guy at Barstool Sports, Dave Portnoy, he is the whole email chain. Now, if the other person is just showing me this much, then, I, then obviously, considering there's going to be no trial, you got to be like, okay, well, then my gut's telling me the person who's going, here's all of this shit versus the people going, here's some of this shit. Either way, accused or uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, oh, shit. Oh, oh Bobby's here. We're in camping right now. You're but camping? Yeah, we're out. We're out in the woods. Yeah. Dude, I'm loving the white stubble, dude. Yeah. Look how good Bobby looks. Bobby, how much weight are you down now? 40. He's got to be. 40. 40 pounds. Congrats, Bobby. That is so good. Dude, you look the best you've looked in like 12 years. Who's this guy? That's Billy Burr. You know Billy. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus, four months off the road and I'm losing all my young fans. I want that as a ringtone. (laughs) Who's that guy? (laughs) Yeah, we're really going camping. Sadly, Max, Such I've literally nice. been to your house and I've met you. Yes, Max, you know Billy. Uh, I remember you, but I don't remember you for once. All right, hang on, hang on. I gotta hey, take Bobby, care of Hey, Bobby, we were we were talking about. Oh, <laughs> yeah, am I cursing? Hang on. Sorry. No, no, no. It's all right. You go ahead. We were talking. I was trying to describe <laughs> to Bert how gorgeous your hairdo and how original your hairdo was oh. when I first met you. Oh, the, 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 uh, the corkscrew. All you have to do is YouTube last night at Eddie's movie. The opening scene, I pull up on a motorcycle. I take my helmet off and I flip my curls, my little cork, my corkscrews. Dad, don't flip the corkscrews. Yeah. Bobby, you look phenomenal. Thank you, buddy. Thank I'm you. not gonna lie. Last time I saw you, I was like, "This guy is gonna—he's gonna—he's gonna face plant one day, and he's not getting up." So, please keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Don't say that about my cheeky dad. He's cheeky Remember dad. Remember that umpire, Bert? It was really sad. He was—it was—it was warm-ups, and he literally turned around and walked to the backstop and just face planted, and that was it. Yeah. I think the Philly freak had to back up the four-wheeler and throw him on the back <laughs> and drive him off. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the Philly freak. Look at Bobby's backyard. Isn't it amazing? No, this is, I'm he, camping. He, I'm in the he, I'm Bobby, in KLA. Don't the lie, man. I want, I mean, the, I'm I want you to get that celebrity hate. The acres up in Cold Springs. Louis C.K. lives behind me. Yeah. <laughs> there you that's, go. <laughs> That's that's Louis over there. My Max beat it. Get out of here. <laughs> Let me. Can you open? Oh, Bobby, what are those? What are those? Marshmallows. And no, Bobby, say it the way you yeah, used to say it. I want to hear Bobby say it. Say it the way you used to say it in your act. <laughs> <laughs> Marshmallows with hot chocolateopolis. <laughs> you know, I always respected that you kept doing that bit, even after Patrice was giving you all that shit. Oh God. Yeah. Dude, I will. Sh- hey, Max, hang on. Gonna, I got to talk to my kid for a sec. Okay. Why don't you get back to a great weekend with your kid, and we'll go yeah. back to our ignorance here. Bobby, right. go back. Last go back night at Eddie's. We're in the wilderness, guys. Can we start <laughs> to Zoom? <laughs> back off. Listen, I got to go hang with the kid. I love you guys. Love you too, I'll see Bobby. you guys later. Great, I'm not Bobby. having marshmallows, though. I'm, I'm yeah, having, eat these. I'm having, I know, Bobby. I'm having you're these. having marshmallows. <laughs> marshmallows. <laughs> I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye, right, buddy. <laughs> see you. See you, Max. Get out of here. I swear to God, I'm going to. What if you just heard him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got to have it. He thought he hung up. Uh, who's this guy? That's my. That's my uh, I got to get that. Andrew, can you get that? Can you, I want to, I want to use that as Bobby's ringtone. Who's this guy? The, it's interesting that we have, we have, uh, I, I, there's probably some word for it, but we have memories of our friends 
of their acts from 20 years ago that never leave us. Like little things they did where you go, oh, I'm never going to forget that. For whatever reason, marshmallows or... or uh, Do you know what? I don't have one from your act. I just have a look that you had. What's that? And I was like, why is he doing that? He's not that guy. Wait, what was the look? It was when you were with Barry Katz. And Barry, for some reason, was telling all of his clients, listen, if you want to be taken seriously in this business, you need to wear an Armani suit. Every one, all of one of my clients, if they see on stage, you look like you're on The Tonight Show, and the next thing you know, you're doing Letterman. That's yep. what he said. And I went down, and I was like, yeah, I'm not wearing a fucking Armani suit. And I went down, and you had on this Joe Pesci silver... I don't know what it was. Men's warehouse trying to be an Armani. And then you had like this Caesar haircut. Yep. Bangs with the moose. And I'm like going, this guy is the dude you want to drink with in a bar. He's the frat. He's, he's yeah. I mean, I mean, I never thought, you know, he should be shirtless on stage. <laughs> I mean, you've, <laughs> you've run the gamut. That, but that was during the era do you, and I, and I, I jumped onto this look. Do you remember when everybody had, it was this weird time where comedians and agents were dressing the same? Yeah. Remember, you had the, that, that electric blue button down with the black fucking slacks, like Hillary Clinton pantsuit slacks in yep. shoes and your hair moosed up. I did that for a good 18 months. Got and nowhere then, with it. And then we all graduated to the exact same look that we all shot on a special jeans, black shoes, black shirt, black cup, button down. Me, yeah, because that's when people were saying, you want your special to be timeless. Don't do any topical material. Don't wear stuff that's going to be out of date. Dude, I just went through this whole, uh, you know, cleaning up my office, and I went through all of these photos and shit, dude. I will tell you, the worst decade ever for fashion, is, I'm just speaking for white people here, was the 90s. Oh, yeah. Dude, when it went from grunge into the hip-hop, when grunge combined with the hip-hop bagginess, dude, I have some pictures of me in these giant, like, Linus-looking shirts where, like, this shit here, what, what is it? This is supposed to be, like, right here, right? The seam? Dude, it yeah. was, like, down here. <laughs> and I was in the best shape of my life. I had abs, and I was walking away and wearing, like, a fucking potato sack. Yeah, the 90s was a bad time for clothing. For me, it was uh, baggy jeans, like the big bell-bottom jeans, like oh, almost like horrible. raver jeans. Yeah, those were horrible. All of that shit, you got it down the village, and everybody thought they were so fucking hip. Yeah, those stores, there was a store on the corner of Cornelia and like West 4th that was just like, it, you, I, remember, I remember one of my buddies came from Tallahassee up to visit, and he walked in, and he was like, Dude, I just bought all new clothes at this place. I was like, no one shops there. Fuck. Uh, yeah, but he looked like he looked like the man when he went back to Florida. Though. Yeah, he did. He probably got gay bashed in Tallahassee. <laughs> um, yes. I remember Eighth Street was the place where I went. Like whenever I needed the uh, the oh. De Niro three quarter leather leather jacket. Yeah. Dude, I had one that had a zip in lining. The bet the coat weighed like thirty pounds. It's probably my shoulders are fucked up. All those years riding in coach, trying to reach up and <laughs> turn the air on, wearing that giant coat because I couldn't take it off. It was like another person. Yeah, those those coats were the 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 three quarter length uh, leather coats. I still have mine. I got it at Banana Republic, and I remember I put that on and I was like, I finally belong in New York. Like I belong. I put a scarf on. I had gloves. I'm like, I'm a New Yorker. No more Tallahassee. I would have never had this in Tallahassee. I'm here, baby. Yep. Everything that made me unique in New York, I now look like everybody else. I did the same thing. I still have one. It's a really nice one. I started wearing it down to the, uh, the comedy store before all this. Bowl. Over the winter, I was wearing it again. It almost looks like a suit jacket, but it's a jacket. It's a black leather three-quarter. Um, and I was, and I, I was putting it on. I was like, I like this coat. I always ask my wife, I'm like, can I get away with this? And she always says that thing where she squints, kind of looks it up and down. She goes, yeah. And then I have that playing on a loop. And that's why I look like an asshole when I show up. Dane, I'm wearing Dane it. I'm trying leather. to be a badass. Dane had good leather coat game for like, in like early 2000s, 
Dane's leather coat game was I was like, he'd show up, I'd be like, God, does he have a fucking motorcycle? Where did he get that jacket? Dane has a sick motorcycle. Does he? Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. He has one of the best looking, I think it's a Ducati, one of the best I've seen. It's really? fucking gorgeous. Like, it's one of those things, even if you didn't ride, if you just had it in your garage, you could just sit there and look at it. Oh, I would love to have a motorcycle. I would too. I'm jonesing for one. I want to get like a dirt bike, but I just, you know, I, I, but then, you know, I just always think whenever I think about buying, investing in a hobby like that, it's the amount of times and then I hear, the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon, <laughs> little boy blue and the man in the moon. Wait, tell me about your helicopter ride. Uh, I had not flown in, uh, since January. Uh, and then the tragedy with Kobe happened and then my wife told me to stop flying and shit. So I was like, all right, you know, I was pretty shook up. You're pretty shook up when you see a pilot with that skill level that happened. Um, and, uh, you know, <laughs> months went by and I just missed it, dude. I fucking missed it. And I, I love the challenge of it and the tests and staying current. And it was really like, it was activating a part of my brain. God knows I only use a small portion of it that I never use. So I had a friend of mine who has a friend who has an A-star. Um, you want to see it on the poster over here? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to see it. Okay, I'll show you the one here. I got to turn it around. Turn around right now. Here, here Bill, Bill, Bill. Yes. I'll show you this, I'll show you this girl. Oh, look at her. Bill, uh, someone turned nine years old yesterday. Oh, can almost get into the movies for half price. Yeah, so which one is right. it? All right, it is right there, that one. Okay, the it's a like a cop helicopter. That's a single. This one here is the twin. It's a single engine. Um, so I flew that. I've flown this one before, but I usually fire that little, little rinky-dink one right there, the 22, yeah. occasionally a 44, but I flew the big boy there. And uh, I got to tell you, man, fucking, it was incredible. And I have not, and I, I knew I wasn't going to fly. I was anticipating not even being able to hold a hover because I never fly those things. Yeah. And, uh, dude, it just came right back. Really? And I'm not saying I flew. I didn't fly, you know, I'm saying within my skill set, I flew great. And just from um, doing, like, the instrument stuff and everything, I was really cognizant of my altitude. I, my scan used to be really bad. Or if I'd look down to change the radio, I'd go down 200 feet or go up 300, which I know sounds really fucking crazy, but it's... it's no, it's not. I, I flew a plane one time, and just the littlest, littlest thing like that, all of a sudden, you just... In an airplane, we would, I would lose altitude. Yeah. So with those things, I was finding, compared to what I'm used to flying, I, I felt like I, I was flying like this to maintain a level attitude, but it's just... And then also with those... I love, the, I love the helicopter, but I also found like when I was taxiing with it, there's a major blind spot. And I heard that those guys sometimes kind of turn it to the side so they can make sure, you know, because it was like fucking jets and stuff. <laughs> really? Yeah, like the, those G whatever's sitting there. So when we got back to the airport, I said to the guy I was flying, I was like, dude, can you take controls? I, I don't, I feel comfortable setting it down here, but he wanted me to get closer to the jets. I was like, yeah, you know, I really don't want to be in a YouTube video. Why don't you... Uh, I haven't flown in, you know, five months here. But uh, I had such a great time. I flew out of Van Nuys. Look at that fucking spider flying. Um, I flew out of Van Nuys. So we took off. I made a left and just got on the 101. Like I was going to Hollywood. And uh, after you get out of Van Nuys, you get on with, you get on with uh, Burbank. And then you go to the Quanga Pass. There's like Universal's like right here. And then the yes. Hollywood Bowl. And then um, Capitol Records. Went right out over Silver Lake, Dodger Stadium, downtown LA. Looped around all the skyscrapers, like uh, Town Hall down there. It was yeah. so cool. And then, uh, even though it was a hazy day, and then I followed the 10. You stay north of the 10, so you're out of LAX's airspace. Um, then just cut diagonally across, got on with Santa Monica, even though they were closed, just in case there was anybody in the traffic. I'm just going through this so I remember how to do it. Then over Pacific Palisades, up Malibu. And then went over the hills and then came back down to Calabasas. Up Malibu is where that's my, that, that is so fucking beautiful out there. Yeah. It's weird though. You kind of cut off from, dude, I saw two fucking houses out there, even from Malibu. It was like, what the 
fuck. When you see them from the air, there was like two like on the giant hill, like one was here and one was here. And their their yards, like they had like a like a legit hole of golf, it looked like. God. And then they had like, you know, I, I don't know. Are you are you a f- I like the old style shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I'll tell you what I want. Did I even tell you about this here in my office? It has a bathroom in there with like a stand-up shower. And my brother came out to visit. So he, he walks into the house and he's like, he goes, Bill, the uh, hot water's not working. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I was like, all right, I got to get that fixed. So I had to get, come inside and use our bathroom, right? So I had a guy fucking come in here and he goes, uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, like a, a half hour comes back to the house. He goes, not only is the hot water not working, it's not even hooked up. <laughs> There's no hot water line out here. It's like, what the fuck? You t- they, they put like the, they put the handle. It was like a dummy handle. <laughs> You turn it all you want, like, no water's coming out. Really? So, uh, yeah, so I had to put a hot water, uh, I think I had to put a hot water heater into this car. I can't even, I've, I've spent so much fucking money on this house, I'll, I'll never get it back. But. I like, see, I like your, your house, I mean, your house is beautiful. I like that style. I also like those Malibu, I, I wish, like, my dream house would be one of those houses where, your house is up here, you walk down, and the pool is in the backyard, and it's just a square. It's like a, a rectangle, simple rectangle with coping and grass everywhere with, like, tall trees on the side. Like, that kind of look that you know. It's like a, almost like old-school estate look. Oh. <laughs> you know who's got a great pool is Ooh. that old uh, Cecil B. DeMille house. Dean Del Rey got me into like houses and shit. Yeah. And uh, and he he likes everything from I always want to call the guy uh, L. Ron Hubbard. I know it's not that. He's the, the architect. Uh Frank Lloyd Wright. Yeah. H. I used to live Wells. next door to the Flank Lewis Frank Lloyd Wright house. Yeah, he like he found like uh when we were in Iowa together, he we he goes, dude, we gotta leave this hotel. We're in the middle of fucking Iowa. Mm. He goes, There's a Frank Lloyd Wright hotel down the way. And I'm like, really? He goes, dude, I'm telling you, it's incredible. So I was like, all right, let's stay down there. Dude, I, and I went down the bar, got hammered down there. I thought, like, I didn't even know who I thought was going to come walking in, like like the legends of Hollywood. And they were going to yeah. be, like, when they were young, come walking in. It was incredible. Although this guy did talk my ear off, and I was shit-faced, too. And he was annoying. You know, like, when you're fucking hammered and somebody's still annoying you? That's, like, that's an amazing thing for me, because I'm a happy drunk. And I was about eight or nine in. And I was still like, this guy's fucking... Guys, a chatty Cathy here. Just let me enjoy my drink. So um, I like uh, the Mediterranean style houses out here, just because we never had anything like that back east. And other than that, I I, I do like the um, the craftsmen's houses. And then other than that, I like the super modern, just those ridiculous looking fucking. They're all like glass, but there's a you know just like this hacky comedy. Um, there's like hacky architecture. Yeah. Like every, my, me and my wife watch those, uh, those architecture shows and they're, they're always doing the big stupid standalone bathroom. Um, I mean, bathtub right next to a giant window. Yeah. Like you want to be showering in front of you, in, in front of your neighbors. Like every single penthouse I've seen that. Would you just nod to? I thought you were quarantined by yourself. No, my, my crew's here. Oh yeah. We're all quarantined together. The Bill Burt Podcast is sponsored by Heath. Heath Bar. <clears throat> yeah, we got we had the tour bus at the house, and we're living in the tour bus for just a day or two, just to make sure that we don't, like, make sure there's no residual uh, symptoms, and then we're bouncing. There you go. Some people left already, but the mo- most of us was here. That's awesome. And how did the tour go? It was out of this world, Bill. I got to be honest with you. Probably the coolest thing I've ever done in my career. It, 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 it made me feel like a legit rock star because you traveled with three tour buses. So you had my tour bus, a tour bus for the crew, and then a semi that dragged the stage with us. So we get there. How did you make any money? Uh, you do. It's, you, you do. It, not a ton of money, but, but you make money. And, and for me- I, I heard how much money you made with the second you do. You go, uh, you do. You do. But so- it, it went down. So- what happens is uh, you go in, they build the stage morning of, and then they set up a three camera shoot. And then they shoot that on a 90 by 90 foot 
screen above the stage. So everyone's in their car, they're watching the screen, but they can see you. So it's kind of like when you go and do those big venues where they put the screens up and people watch the screens regardless. But um, it was amazing, Bill. And I think what it was amazing about it was being able to let everyone get out of their house, let everyone know that they're going to be safe. Their safety was up to them. They had an area that was designated for them in their car. If they wanted to tailgate in front or behind, they could. They could keep socially distanced. They could wear a mask. And it was amazing. They'd get in, they'd open doors at 7, and people would start piling in. Show starts at 9. So there's two hours where people are smoking meats, grilling burgers, making, they come in in a pickup truck and have it filled with water. In the back, they'd be in the pool. They're throwing the football. They're playing cornhole. They're drinking booze. And then it the sounds sunset. like the Opie and Anthony tour to me. Dude, it was, it was <laughs> the sun would set. And as soon as the sun set, people start getting ramped up. And then the show starts. And the shows were awesome. I think people were so appreciative of, of, of maybe not, it might not being a big money grab, but letting people go out and get outdoors and, and li live a little bit this summer. I think. Well, that's good to hear because the reason why I haven't done any shows is I, I don't want to get people sick. Yeah. You know, because you could literally do a show and because you did a show, somebody loses their grandparents or somebody with asthma or something. It's like, I, I don't, I don't want to, you know. Well, there's. Probably nuts, but I don't want to, I don't want to kill anybody. I'll tell you this, we did some club shows and some were done right and some were done wrong. And you would have to go in to the club and be like, hey, I'm not comfortable with this. I need you to, like we went into, I'll tell you what, who did it perfect. I mean, a lot of places did it perfect. But Leisha in Des Moines did a soft opening to try to test out social distancing and did it perfectly. They removed all the tables and then they spotted tables like socially distant throughout the room. And it was fucking I mean, perfect. Everyone was at least 10 feet away from the other person. And so places are doing it right. They really are. Places, other places are, you know, it's, it's tough because state to state, everyone kind of has their own state's version of what they believe safety is. So the states that are hotspots are hotspots for a reason. And people are going in, going to bars and they're hanging out in bars. And, you know, despite even social distancing, some people would just move. They'd sit down and they go, ah, let's get closer to the stage, you know? And so you can't really dictate how an American should live to an American. And that's why I think if I go out, I'm not going to do clubs again. I'm just going to do, <clears throat> just going to do these drive-in movie theaters because the drive-in movie theaters were fucking safe and they were great shows, like 100% safe. And then at the end, standing ovation, everyone gets in their cars and starts flicking their high beams at you and beeping their horns. It was like you were getting abducted by fucking aliens. <laughs> standing on the stage, everyone's losing their mind. They're playing Black Betty from Ram Jam. Everyone's flicking them. And then I get in a golf cart, stand on the back, get a cocktail, shirt off. And we, while everyone sat in traffic to exit, we just drive by the cars and wave everyone and thank them. It was such a great experience. Oh, wow, dude. That you went above and beyond. That's awesome, man. That's well, awesome. you know, for me, for me, it was like, I didn't think I was going to make any money. I made money, but I, I didn't think I was going to make much money. I wanted to film it. But more importantly, I knew that I got to a certain time in this quarantine where I was like, I want to fucking do something, man. Like, I'm tired of this. I want to go see a band. Like, if they put a band up at a, at a drive-in movie theater, I'd be there tomorrow. If, if I, 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 wanted, I would love to get more of my friends and do a, a close-out end-of-summer festival, like just one well, show at a drive, great drive-in. Tell you what, I got a little kid out, obviously. I got a son who's only a month old. There's a drive-in movie theater where Tarantino shot... Um, um, once upon a time in Hollywood, there's one east of, of uh, downtown LA. Yeah. That I've always wanted to go to. You know, if you ever wanted to do a show out there, you know, and then that's also one that you could, you could turn that into a benefit, help some people out, small yeah. businesses or something like that. Um, because we could just drive out there and then come right back. It literally like, is. <laughs> it literally cost is. You gas money. Zero contact. The whole crew is in masks and gloves. The crew backstage. You, you go on stage, and when you get off, they go up. They grab your mic, pull it. They wipe a brand new mic, put a brand new mic up for you. It is the safest I've ever felt. That's amazing. Yeah, the safest I have ever felt. And, I, and, I, and I, I texted, like, I've been texting with a bunch of people that have been curious about how these are going. And because I think other people would like to do them. It's just very expensive. Like, you got to be, it's, it's a tough ticket sell, you know? So, um, uh, I, listen, if, if you can do something for people that's positive, 
you know, I, I, I think that's, that's, a, that's a great thing. My thing is I just have to be home for the first three months here. Yeah. Once, once uh, Junior's sleeping through the night, which last night we had a great night. No. He was, he was up uh, 10 to 12. He's been rough. And then, like, wow. you know what's fucked? It was, like, he fell asleep at midnight, and I'm like, I should go to sleep, and I couldn't sleep. I'm fucking on my phone at, like, 1 in the morning, you know, just looking at shit. And then I finally fell asleep. And then he woke up at, like, 3.30. My wife breastfed him. And then, it, then it was, you know, it's my, my job to change him and then get him back to sleep. So I was like, all right. And uh, he just wouldn't go back to sleep. And then he just farted, and I thought he pooped. So I went to take the thing off, and there was no poop in there. So then that woke him up again, and I was like, fuck. And I'm back on the exercise ball, sh 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 doing this shit. And, and then he just fucking, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> so that was like from like four to about 10 after five. But then once he went down, because I have it down, like what I do is I bounce up and down like this, and then I slow the bounce down, then I start doing like a rock like this, okay? And then one of the rocks becomes the stand-up. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, and the rock becomes the stand-up, and then I, I brought him over to the thing, and I just was like, I was just like, I am just setting him down like I would set down something that I like. An inanimate object, because I feel like if you go like, and you do that, you somehow roll their head. There's something they're gonna wake up. I just went over and I just boom, set him down, took my hands out. That was it, and I just stood there for like five seconds. Did a little, <laughs> I went right to bed, right? And I was in bed, and, and I slept till like uh, somewhere between seven and eight. My daughter was just going, Dad, Dad. I just, I was like, I can't. I just can't. All right, everybody, uh, Manscaped. Fellas, are you prepared to unveil your summer bod? Manscaped is here to ensure that your post-quarantine body is ready for the wild. Don't be the guy at the beach with a bear rug on your chest. And if you grew some quarantine, ma and if you grew some quarantine man tits, the least you can do is make sure they're hairless. Uh, Manscaped is dedicated to helping you level up your body full, your Fuck, I suck at reading. And <laughs> they're helping you level up your full, full body grooming game. Dude, that was such a great joke with the man tits and I blew it. <laughs> I'll never host a, an award show. Uh, they have forever changed the grooming game with their perfect package 3.0. What is that, you ask, Bert? What is it? Yeah, the perfect package 3.0 kit comes with the essential lawn mower. 3.0 waterproof cordless body trimmer and a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your manscaping routine. This is the best trimmer on the market for those of you in need of a chest shave. Uh, this third generation trimmer features skin safe technology to reduce manscaping accidents. Don't give yourself an accidental nipple piercing, Jesus. Um, you can also adjust settings to get the lengths you like and you can stay on top of it all with almost no effort at all. They also just launched uh, in Canada. Oh, great. So for a Canadian. Yeah, with your frozen man tits up there, you can carve a fucking maple leaf right in your chest uh, without using the right... Okay, if you've gone years without using the right tools for the job, you can be one of the first Canadians to experience their life-changing products. Be sure to use their crop cleanser to keep your hair and skin healthy. It's an all-in-one formula, so it's as good for healthy chest hair as it is for your skin. Inside the perfect package, you'll also find the Manscaped Crop Preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant, and moisturizer. Your balls will be gleaming uh, because we know how painful chafing can be when you're wearing your bathing suit all day. I've got uh, a bit also... about that. Huh? I've got a bit about that in my new hour. I was just thinking about you running that marathon. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that salve on your balls. Uh, you also find the uh, you'll also find the crop re reviver, a testy toner that's designed to give you a pep in your step. I like that. I like that too. Subscribe to the perfect package and get a new blade refill for your lawn mower trimmer delivered in you uh, to your door every three months. Oh God, this is like a class I know I'm not going to pass. It's still going. <laughs> Fuck. Subscribe to the perfect package and get a new blade refill to your 
for your lawnmower trimmer delivered to your door every three months. For a limited time, sub subscribers get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag, a $39 value, and the patented high-performance reduced chafing Manscaped Boxer Briefs. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the, coded, with the code BILLBERT here at manscaped.com. Andrew, is here part of the code? No, it shouldn't no. be. So it's Bill Burt, all capitals, at manscaped.com. Do yourself a favor and always use the right tool for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code Bill Burt at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code Bill Burt. Trim your chesticles with the besticles. All right, I got through it. I remember Louis C.K. expressed the moment. He, he, def he was defining the moment from when you put your second child in the car seat and you shut the door. He goes, that moment from shutting the door to getting to the driver's car, that's my vacation. <laughs> oh. It was a, such a great like observation. I remember going like, oh my God, that's exactly, like that little moment of freedom you have where you're like, I'm, I don't have to deal with anyone for like fucking five seconds until I get in this car. You know what I've, re I've realized that what being a, a really good husband and a father is, is um, sort of embracing the comedy of your existence where it's like, I don't know how to put it in words like without pissing fucking women off, but it really is like you have to kind of, you, like your emotions don't mean anything to anybody. Your kids don't care. The, you, the woman in your life isn't going to care. Like, and their emotions are priority. You got to keep your wife happy. and You got to keep your kids happy. And it's just like, you know, like just, just as far as like when people call up and they check in, how's the kids? Huh? How's your wife doing? Oh, God bless her. God bless. Oh, Jesus. How's your kids? Oh, they're so cute. Blah, blah, blah. And there's going to be, no one's going to check in with you. And as far as like that joke, your vacation, my thing with that is I just talk to other dads and you know, you just start to tell that story and you just laugh. You just start la you just start fucking laughing at the, uh, you're almost, it's, you know, it's this weird thing where everyone knows where you are, but you're also invisible. Yeah. It's fucked. It's really fucked. So you have to be like, I kind of, I figured it out like a couple of days ago and I was just like, no, this is what it is. And this is the way it's supposed to be. Cause this is the only way it works. So man the fuck up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> go make yourself a root beer float or something. If you're feeling sad there freckles, but like, I really, I'm telling you, that is like, that's, that's, that's what it is. The kids are going to jump on you. They don't give a fuck. You're just like a giant, like a, uh, like a bouncy house to them. And then to everybody else, it's just gonna, you're going to be like an employee. Yeah. Where my you kids. Going? Could you go get this? Could you I pick to, this up? I had to explain to my daughters that uh, I'm home, but I can't come home. And they're, you know, they're in high school. They, they get it, but they're so used to me being a martyr about things like that, that they're like, Oh dad, just, it's okay, dad. We want you to come home. I go, no, no, I'm, I'm, and then, they drove over last night and they're sitting in the car and they're like shocked that I'm staying distant. And cause I was waiting for the test results a hundred percent. We got them this morning at like eight in the morning, but uh, I'm, I'm sitting distance from the car. And I'm like, I'm gonna be in the bus for a couple days. I hope we're going to hang out here. And they're like, dad, you're being poo poo pants. And I go, no, stop. I go, this is what a responsible dad does. And I was like, oh shit, I'm being responsible. I was like, Leanne, give me credit for this. And Leanne, Leanne talked to them about it. And they were like, so wait, he really is making sure that we don't get sick. And my and Lance, like, 100%. If he had come home before his test results were in, he would have no clue, and it would be irresponsible. Yeah, being a dad and a husband, you're the left tackle. <laughs> That's what it is. You're just protecting the blind side, and only like total fucking football nerds know the name of the the left tackle on the team. But everybody knows the quarterbacks and the receivers. That's basic. Even a defensive lineman makes a sack and gets to do a dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Mark Gastineau. Did you ever see the video of Mark Gastineau jumping from the top of his second-story house into his pool and diving in it? 
He went head first? Head first off the second story of his house into his fucking pool. How deep is it? I have no idea. Dude, that is, guy was like 250, 260. And he is, he's in like a pair of short shorts and just, whew, and it, I mean, I was like, oh, he's going to break his fucking neck. Yeah. That's oh a big God. thing in Florida, right? Yo, yeah, look, big thing in Florida. You go out in a boat. It's always feet first, feet first, first time. And so you go out in a boat and everyone's drinking. You're diving off. Then you guys have a few more beers. You don't know this, but the tide's lowered. And all of a sudden now what was 10 feet of water is now four feet of water. And you dive in and you break your fucking neck. You never, never, feet first, first time, every time. We were just on. Well, wait a minute. But that, you went feet first, but then the tide went down. Feet first. For, every time you get in the water, feet first, first time. Jump in feet first. Man. So then is there a thing if you're on a boat, if a certain amount of time has gone by, feet first? Who feet the, first. What, what, are you in the they're, fucking. No, they're unloading, program? they're unloading the bus. And so they're coming in and out, unloading the bus. I'm just seeing, you know, like Cher has a rack of clothes, like a wardrobe. I'm just picturing you with all these different, like Hawaiian tank tops. <laughs> five of them. I had five Hawaiian shirts. I had a couple visors, some sun hats. And then, Bill, my big purchase, my new favorite thing are these short shorts. I don't know if you can see them. I don't know if I want to see them. Oh, God. Like, do you remember those? Who's that Latino boxer used to wear those? The Macho Man. Uh, oh, Hector uh, Macho Camacho used to Macho wear Macho Camacho used to, it was like, a, yeah, I love them, Bill. They're like, do you remember Dolphin running shorts when we were kids? They were like. I, I tried Bill. to stay away from shorts, how white my legs are. Oh, I love them. I'm wearing these every day. Yesterday, we went to, no, day, day before yesterday, to close the tour out, to like celebrate we got a you dress like an old white woman playing slots. <laughs> <laughs> I got my I got my mask on. All you need is everything. you just need the cigarette going and like a fucking Miller High Life, whatever I'm you I'm this drink. close to drinking a beer, Bill. I'm going back on the wagon tomorrow. I'm this close to drinking a beer. Oh, that's that's good though. I I, I how uh let me live vicariously through you. What were you drinking while you were out there? Ooh. Uh, I take a if we so we only had like three days off. So I take a double Tito's on stage with me, a double Tito's and soda on stage with me, and a big glass crushed, crushed drive-in movie theater ice, crushed the like popcorn ice. Oh, Bill, fucking fill that all the way to the top, right? Tito's halfway, soda water the halfway, and and freeze would film would go on the outside of the glass come from the dew in the night air. It was such a great drink. Have a double Tito's stage. Right when I started, I'd, I'd do an hour's new, an hour I new material. That dirty dancing. That was oh. uh, very romantic. I'd do an hour of material, and then I'd go, all right, what stories do you guys want to hear? And I'd tell two stories, usually flying dildos in the machine. And that's when I'd start drinking my drink. Get off stage. I'd have another one waiting for me. We go on the back of the golf cart, have drinks as you go around and say hi to everyone in their cars. When everyone's in their cars, you just drive by five feet away. Thank you for coming. Get back to the tour bus. Now everyone's in the tour bus, right? Everyone's in the tour bus. We got two hours till we leave. And that's when you start putting back pops. Like, oh, and then I'd have maybe well, another wait, double tea to the soda. Night. And then I go to beat. At night, aren't you paying overages? Yeah, no. We just have, we had it so that he drove every night. So he was sleeping during the day. Oh, okay. So we had stuff to do during the day. We went uh, ra rafting down the Rio Grande. We drove race cars. We did, we did a bunch of really cool shit. But we had to, we had a producer in Denver who would call ahead and make sure that everything was distant. So if we rolled into a place, everything was clean. Everything was, no one was there. It was ours entirely. So That's amazing. Man. I paid a little extra to make sure that everyone was safe because I realized we didn't have an out plan if someone got sick. Like if someone got sick, the whole bus was getting sick and we were all getting coronavirus. So I just said, I'm going to pay someone in Denver to be kind of like four steps ahead of us everywhere we went. And then so whether it was hotel rooms or activities, everything was all set up, set aside for us. We just rock in, no contact, do it, and then bail out. It was really I, fucking. I don't know who your tour manager is, but they they crushed it. Oh yeah, well we, oh, I have two. I had two on this tour, um, one on hands and one in Denver. But we did. We went to uh, Lake Sand Hollow yesterday, two uh -huh. days ago. To the end of the tour, I said, we're, "We have a day off." And we were waiting for our test results to come in, so we didn't want to go home. 
So I said, let's all go. We'll get a pontoon boat. We'll be socially distanced. We'll be in the center of a lake. We don't have to deal with anyone. Bill, it was one of the most beautiful days I've ever had. Oh, my God. You know who I want to do a tour? I want to do a run with you, me, Joe Bartnick, and Paul Verzi. Oh, let, and let me plan the tour. Like, let me plan all the extracurriculars because we did everything. I mean, we had so much fucking fun. It, it was like just on the road trip, just like you roll into a city and then our, my, girl, my, my producer, Stacy in, in uh, Denver would be like, all right, I got four activities for you guys to do. You guys want to do any of these activities? If not, hang out at the, at the drive-in. There are some days, you know, you get to the drive-in a little late and you just run, run five miles, get, take the hose, wash off. Oh, it's fucking out of this world. It was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? You know what's crazy, Bill? It's like, I don't like talking about this shit too much. But to hear like all the guys on the crew individually at certain times go, hey, man, thanks for getting me back to work. I've been not working this whole summer. This is going to help. Like those little things where yeah. you're like, you're like fucking pump money back into the economy, help people keep their shit. I do. I tour like that the whole the rest of the year if, if, if I could. Well, let's try to do a... Uh... We'll do a big show in LA. LA show. I'm just nervous too because I haven't done stand up since March. I'm just I I don't feel like going to a just bombing. I want to make sure I do a good job. I have to walk, pace around my garage, trying to remember how my act went. We'll get you know what we'll do. I'll get I'll get the drive-in movie theater out here, and I'll get all of us out there, and we'll each do like 15 minutes. It'll be we'll do it. We'll give all the money to a charity, and it'll be a fucking dude. I'm telling you. When you're getting ready to go on stage and the sun's setting and you're seeing people out in their car and they got their seats out and their, their hoods up and they're sitting in the back of their trucks, you see smoke coming up, people are playing wiffle ball. You're just like, this is America, man. This is like, I got so, so emotional. like yesterday. something that's usually painted on the side of a van. <laughs> the dues on top of your drink. <laughs> Dude, it was so awesome. Uh, it was so awesome. I, I, I'm, I'm like... I'm glad to be home. I'm, I'm very glad we're safe. Like it was tough, like right towards the end where you start, like we were in Fort Collins and we went water skiing for the day uh -huh. and um, wake surfing. So we get a surfboard and you get behind the wake and you surf on the wake. It was funny shit. We went out late night drunk as fuck and a thunderstorm came in, lightning striking the water. We're like, oh, it was out of this world. But um, Dude, you just kind of live a bachelor party, I feel like. Oh, yeah. I, I went all out. That's why this wasn't a very prosperous tour <laughs> yeah but you had to have fun I'm, I'm gonna send you a uh i gotta show you this i gotta show you something that I, i'd seen before and had not looked at in a while like remember i was telling i think i maybe it was rogan i was saying how i like weird shit you want to see something fucking cool as hell yeah i'll pick this one here how fucking cool is that thing oh that is fucking awesome you see that yeah, is that a Volkswagen? No, it's a Jeep. It's like a 19, that's 1961. That actually says Willys FC, which meant like forward control. Basically means you're sitting over the engine. Holy shit. <laughs> I would not want to hit a fucking tree in that thing. But I would imagine that that thing was like three on the column. That looks like the funnest little fucking thing. Like when I, when I see something like that, that makes me wish I didn't live in L.A., I lived in the middle of nowhere and had some property and I could just drive around in that thing, just fucking around. But I know after a while I, I would go insane. Um, I think if you grew up in the country, you like the country. If you grew up more city, you like the city. So I, I want to live on the beach. Are you going to be a Mal you going to move out to Malibu and I'm never going to see you again. You son of a bitch. Yeah, if after this divorce, I mean, whenever it happens, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I, my wife, I, I, How much money do you have that you go, after my divorce, I'm moving to Malibu? What, that <laughs> fucking trailer park? There's a trailer park out there. In my tour bus. I'm going to move my tour bus out there. <laughs> Dude, I couldn't leave Leanne. I don't even know the... My credit cards got frozen, Bill, and because I was traveling. And so I called Leanne. I'm in a Target trying to buy a, a, a boombox type thing so we can have it on the boat. When I call Leanne, I'm like, hey... uh. My credit cards are frozen. She goes, just call them and unfreeze them. I go, yeah, I don't know how to do that. She goes, are you being serious? I said, well, I don't know. Just can you do it for me? And she goes, yeah, I can do it for you. But don't ever fucking forget this. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. If I left my wife, I'd be standing in the front yard with my new girlfriend going, can you unlock our credit cards? Well, you know what happened was all the charges that you had. They were so fucking random. Like you're buying coolers and 
tequila and fucking, you know, like all this fun shit. They're probably like going, what, what the fuck is this guy who lives in LA, whitewater rafting or whatever the fuck you were doing on the Rio Grande? That's the one thing we didn't spend any money on was booze. They- oh, Was it sponsored? You no, know, so, many, so many breweries hit me up, 85 South, I think it was 85 South. No, that's a, a podcast I like. 85 is a brewery in South Carolina. They're like, just dropped off pallets of beer. They, everywhere we went, someone was a microbrewer who dropped off pallets of beer. And then every venue, you'd, ha- you'd get a bottle of Tito's. And, and, then, and then they'd bring in Buffalo Trace, sent some n- nice whiskeys. Everyone just kind of like sent in stuff. And then I got like a pound of marijuana in Colorado. Oh, yeah? Oh, I got these joints that are one feet long. Like they just gave me, like you go there and I think everyone was so excited that you were uh, coming to like their drive-in or, that, or just like everyone was so excited they just come in and just drop off tons of like gifts. And it was out of this world. I mean, barbecue, people dropped off barbecue. It was out of this world. It was hey, a really what's fun. Your, what's your favorite beer you never heard of that someone brought to you? Um, oh, good. Oh, good. It, this beer is so fun. It's called... I'm going to find out. Let me give, me give me a second. Good. I got one for you. I was in Australia. And there's, a, there's a beer out there called Little Creatures. And the first time I went there, I had one. It was fucking delicious. And then the next time I went there, I was out in Perth in their brewery. I think their, their main brewery is out in Perth. And after I visited the Bon Scott statue in his grave, he's buried out in Perth, um, I went over there and had a show. And I was like, I'm just going to have one. And like three later, I was looking at my wife going, all right, I got to get out of here because uh, I'm going to fuck this show up tonight. But it was... Dave, what's the beer that we love? The good, good vibrations. The one from Hawthorne, the one that I brought. Yeah, was that? Yeah, yeah. What was that one? It's Food Fight Hazy IPA from Common Space Brewery. Common Space, Common Space, dude. This it's in Hawthorne, California, right? Yeah, yeah. I can send you a case if you want. It is, Bill. This beer is so fucking good. I got really into IPAs. I think because I was afraid I was getting coronavirus and I wanted to make sure I still had my sense of taste. So, <laughs> but yeah, what's the name I've of it? Again, that shit. When it's I'm cooking. Hazy IPA. It's pretty new. They just uh, came out with it a couple months ago. It's from Common Space Brewery in Hawthorne, California. Fucking awesome. All right, I'll call you later. Right? Okay. Later. Yeah. Have you ever been in like Cleveland around Christmas time and they have that Christmas ale? No. That's another really good one. And they, yeah. and they only make it, it's like, uh, you know, Sam Adams will have like summer ale during the summer. They do the same thing. It's some sort of Christmas ale. I actually tried to get it, a case of it sent to me um, when we were going to the Rose Bowl because uh, Jay Lawhead's our cook on that day. Yeah. Wait, and, uh, so Jay, Jay, so Lawhead- Lawhead's from Cleveland, so I was going to surprise him with like a rack of that shit. He'd be like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. Uh, what's his face? Uh, Nick, uh, Nick Costas from Hilarities was trying to work it out. I don't know if you know him. He's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, of he- course. I love Nick. Yeah, I love he- Nick. He's with the, you know, the, uh, the, 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 going over the state with the liquor laws. I mean, you, you, you can't do it. <laughs> that guy, man. Yeah, he's a great guy, man. I love. He was still punching people out at like fucking 70. Yeah. I remember I, I, did, I did a week there and, um, and I was asking him, you know, because the club was just getting going. Dude, that's one place I could have made so much fucking money. When he opened up Hilarities, I was there in like 04. He was the only thing on the block. And, yeah. and like they used to have like a security guy walk you over um, to the Euclid Ave or whatever it was over to the hotel. And there was like, it looked like escape from New York. There was nobody down there. And I remember looking at the, ho- the, the, the apartment building right across from it going like, if I had any fucking money, I would buy this. Because yeah. I was seeing all these Rust Belt uh, towns were starting to come back and Pittsburgh was sort of leading it. I felt as far as just like all of a sudden all this tech industry came in there and revitalized the downtown. And of course, now you go there, it looks like the fucking Bullwinkle show on that street but anyway i was like you know so i was asking now how's it going everybody goes you know yeah it's been good you know, yeah i had a little problem with uh you know this you know had a little problem the other night whatever and just sort of glazed over it and then lawhead told me the story some fucking guy wouldn't move his car or some shit like that and then you know he stepped to him and the guy made the mistake of taking a swing at him 
Oh. And yeah, the guy was like in his in the prime, like the prime of his life, like in his twenties. And I guess Nick had no problem handling him. And I always thought that that would be a great movie because your true tough guys never really say what they did. Yeah, yeah you know, well, I mean, they, you do that. I had a little trouble, and then you smash cut to him just fucking beating the shit out of this guy, <laughs> and then coming back to him because he's always dressed like really, you know, old school gentleman type of thing. I remember being, I remember being at that club. It was probably the last time I was there, and I, I was working with a couple younger uh, men, male comics. And maybe it was the second like time, last time story. I was there. And what's that? It sounds like a Me Too story. And I had my shirt off. There was a couple of young males in there. And, uh... No, no, no. Nick uh, was hanging out after the show. And it's my favorite is when you get, I get to hang out with a guy like that and then just talk about the business and talk about, like, what it was like and what, what it's like looking at, like, all the futures and just talk comedy. And uh, I remember one of the young comics was like, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're all sitting with Nick. And he goes, I'm going to get up. I'm going to go try to see if I can get these chicks to go back to the hotel room with me. And I remember thinking, I remember thinking, you'll never make it in comedy. Like, you, you don't care about this. Like, this is so much more important than pussy. Hanging out with Nick and getting him to talk comedy and tell you just, like, the littlest things. I, I hung on every one of his words. I'm so much more fascinated by that than fucking any put. Like, I was like, oh, you're missing it. Like, this is. I bet, I got to tell you this, though. You know, there's a little bar there. Yeah. I, can I ever tell you this story? I'm, I'm, I'm fucking senile now. I met two amazing women there. It was after the show. I think I was signing DVDs. Yeah. It was like the late 2000s. So I'm hanging with Nick, and he's telling stories or whatever, and these two women come up to say hello. I'm like, hey, hey, how's it going? And they, they were, you know, what's up? Blah, blah. I said, you know, the usual. I go, so what do you guys do here? What do you guys do here in Cleveland? And they go, oh, we're gold diggers. And I was it's like, what? And they both laughed. They go, we're gold diggers. So this is when basically there was nothing going on in Cleveland. And I was just going like, all right, with all due respect <laughs> for Cleveland, Ohio, where are you digging for gold out here? And dude, <laughs> they broke down the whole game. Like I took their number. I was doing this show with Joe DeRosa, uninformed. These are the two lost guests. And there was one guy in San Francisco, an Asian cab driver with the most severe Southern accent I ever heard. Yeah. He's like, hey, people out here, I can't believe it. He sounded like Don Knotts. And he was like Japanese. He was just born in the South. And I was like, oh, my God. I, I got to get this guy. But, you know, Opie and Anthony, I think, I don't, know what, I don't know what the fuck happened. But, and then there was these two. So they broke down the whole game. I said, so where do you meet these guys? Like, I want to hear how this whole thing works. She goes, well, you know, we go to steakhouses. And I'm like, of course. That's where old guys with money you know, that's the perfect, you know, age gap or whatever they got. You know, you're not going to fucking Wendy's. They go to a steakhouse. And then the next move was uh, somehow they would go to a Cavaliers game. And these guys would try to impress them. So they would sit down courtside. And she goes, and then when you're at the game, you're trying to make eye contact with the player. So they're trying to use them to get to the next thing. And then they had all of these rules where you never drink a drink unless you saw it get poured and your girlfriend looks out for you, you never go to the bathroom at the same time because she has to watch your drink. And she goes, it would be usually about the third quarter when the guys would realize we weren't going home with them because they would drive separately to the to Gundarine. Like they broke. Dude, when I tell you, I sat there for like 90 minutes like, and I was like, would you, would you guys want to do radio? Would you want to come? <laughs> and we, we just had like no budget and, it was the usual thing. I got their business card, and then by the time I got back, I had no fucking idea where it was. Yeah. It was unreal. I went, I went to, after a DC improv show, these two lesbians uh, were hanging out, partying, and they're like, at, at, at late night, and they're like, hey, we're going to go to a strip club. You want to go to a strip club with us? And I was like, fuck yeah, let's go to a strip club. So like, awesome. So we go to the strip club around the corner. My opening act was a young lady at the time. It's still a young lady, but... Uh, she was going to go and then she bailed and I was like, okay, then I'll just go with them. And we get there and they know I'm married and they give me a drink and I go to put it to my lips. And I thought, I bet I'm getting rolled. I bet these two women are going to, they brought the drink over. I sat down and they brought the drink and handed it to me. And as I went to take a sip, I went, this is how it happens. This is how you get drugged and brought back to a hotel room and robbed. And I was like, oh, 
And I was like, I'm not, I'm obviously not trying to have sex with anyone. But I was like, that's okay. So I go up to the did bar. You did you I go take up to a the fake bar. sip or did you say? No, I go, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I go up to the bar. I hand the drink to the bartender. I said, hey, will you pour me the exact same drink, same glass, just get rid of this one. And he was like, what happened? And I said, I didn't, someone gave it to me. I don't, I don't want it. And he went, oh yeah, no charge. Gives it to me, tip him, come back, have the drink. And they're totally cool. And we get another round, I get another round. And then they look at me and they go, uh, hey, you want to just go back and fuck us? And I'm like, ladies, this is more than worth even, the, just the fact that I get to tell my friends that this happened. Thank you so much. Got up and I walked to my hotel room. <laughs> wow. I, Bill, I walked out and I just started calling people on the street, walking down through DC going, okay, you're never gonna believe it just happened. I called my wife. I was like, these two lesbians wanted to have sex with me. She was like, she was like, they were gonna drug you and steal your shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Can they ever give it up? <laughs> they just wanna be like, honey, what did you ever see in me? <laughs> they just can't fucking, they just, Oh. It's because they love you, though, dude. Yeah. They can't have you walking around feeling good about yourself. You'll be putting off this vibe, and you're going to attract something. So they got to have. They got to keep you. They they just can't. They just can't fucking give it up. I got in bed that night, and I thought this is so such a dork thought thought to have. But I thought I am happier that I have a wife that I can call out of a strip club and say two lesbians wanted to have sex with me. And then me and her laugh about it. And she was like, honey, they were going to drug you and steal your shit. I, I'm happier that I have that than if I had had sex with two lesbians after a strip club. Like that means more to me that I got this per partner where I can be like, yo, I, I, these two chicks want to fuck me. And that that's my wife. I was, I was laying in bed giggling. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, the old days on the road, back when you could fucking be out there. This is making me, uh, it's making me want to do, there's a bunch of places that, you know, if it didn't involve me being on a fucking plane, like, how did you get out there? See, like, I, w I would love to go do a run at fucking Hilarities, but it's just like, I, I don't know, that's an inside gig. And then it's also like, I'm going to sit on a fucking airplane with 300 other people because you know they're going to jam you in there. Yeah, no, tour bus. I got, took the tour bus from L.A., Oh, wait, my legs are. North, North Carolina, all the way back. North Carolina? Wait, you drove a tour bus from here to North Carolina? Yep. And back? And back. All right, so you gigged on the way out. Gigged on the way out, all the way. Uh, stand Up Live in Phoenix, uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico, San Antonio. I had to say that, and I'm breaking bad. I'm yeah? I'm speaking out because I didn't know how to say it. It's a, it's an interesting city in the middle of uh, in the middle of Isn't it right across from El Paso. It was well, halfway between like Phoenix and and San Antonio, so it's a one of the stops when you hit across. You always kind of go New Orleans, San Antonio, Las Cruces, Phoenix, and then home. Or I think we can go Las Cruces all the way to LA. I thought that's in New Mexico. Yeah, it is. You saying you go Phoenix? San Antonio and then back? No, no, no. We went Phoenix, Las Cruces, okay. San Antonio, New Orleans, Birmingham. So you just uh, took the 10 the whole way? Yeah, we just drove across and then up into Alabama, then into North Carolina, into Charlotte, then Greensboro, South Carolina. Then from Greensboro, we went to Indianapolis, then to Tulsa, then to Oklahoma City, and then to Fort Collins, and then Fort Collins to uh, Salt Lake City, Salt Lake City to Hurricane Utah, and then Hurricane Utah to L.A. Hurricane Utah is the only one I never did. That's a great it's, name for a city. It's, that's where that place, we took the riverboat out. We took the pontoon boat out. Oh, I, I posted a video. We got, I got in the middle of the lake, right? Swam out to the middle of the lake by myself, beer in hand. Please don't do that. We took the drum. I, mean, I grew up in Florida. I can swim really good. Took oh, the drone like, down. Like, I know, nobody drowns in Florida. Go ahead. They, they take the drone down from like five feet above the water. And I said, uh, happy 4th of July, America. Stay socially distant. And then they just shoot the drone up like a thousand feet. And you see that there is no one around me. I'm in the middle of a lake. And then we shoot up to the mountain scene in Utah. Fucking gorgeous. Fucking. That's, that's a cool shot, man. I'm yeah. glad you made it out alive. Taught Jesus Trejo how to swim. 
Can he swim now? He can swim now. He's not the best, obviously, but swim. He was in the pool swimming. We did. We were at a truck stop in in New Orleans, and he learned <laughs> how to not swim. The best. And then and then yesterday, two days ago, he jumped off a cliff with a life preserver on. Jumped off a cliff into the water. Popped up like. I mean, he, he wears goggles and a snorkel when he swims because he likes to see what's below him. But, yeah, it was great, dude. No, that's, that's, that's good instincts. I don't mind a lake. I fucking hate I, – I will not swim in the ocean. I just will oh, not do that. it. These, these lakes – the lakes in Utah are amazing because they're – I think they're kind of man-made. And so there, there's no, like, predators in them. So you can just swim Probably out in the, the middle. locals threw dynamite in there to fish, and now there's nothing left. Yeah, I don't think there's any. No, that's not really Mormon-like. You know, when I was flying up uh, the coast on Malibu, I didn't. The other instructor, the instructor pointed out. He goes, "Look at that riptide." And I actually saw what it looked like from the air. Oh yeah. Yeah, dude, and it was so fucking wide. You know, they go, "Oh yeah, it's pulling me out to sea." So I, I just kind of do the side stroke underwater to get out of this fucking thing, dude. This thing looked like it was like fifty yards wide. Do the side stroke. Well, by the time you got out of it. Like, it's, it was good to see it over the top. So it's like, yeah, if you swam up the coast or down, <laughs> eventually yeah. you would be out of it. But how far out would you be? You'd be and out then when you're in it, far. when you're in it, how can you tell that you're not swimming back into it? It's just. You don't even realize you're in it. I've been in a riptide a couple of times and you don't realize you're in it until all, the, like literally all of a sudden you're like, holy shit, I'm like a hundred yards from the beach. And you're like, oh shit. And there's a, a, an, inst an automatic panic that goes in. And then you're like, all right, calm down. Let's just swim sideways. And we're just going to swim sideways for a long time. And then we're going to tread water. And we're going to come in slowly on our back. If, if you do it on your back, that's the one number one thing people, it's so much easier to swim on your back. Like to get on your back and just swim and just swim. Because when you're on your front, especially with waves, open water, you have water splashing in your face. It can kind of freak you out. Dude, it's, it's terrifying. Yeah, and then you're in your back looking like a giant fucking sea urchin. Fuck that, dude. dude just I, fuck I did a triathlon. Alive. I did a dude, triathlon. There's a, woman, there's a woman that I follow on uh, Instagram. Well, it's actually Discover Sharks is what I follow, but they post her shit all the time. And, dude, she is in the fucking water with, like, three tiger sharks and a couple other really aggressive ones. And she is like reading these things being like, okay, they're all intimidated by that one. That's the alpha male one. They're all going to do what he does or whatever. I'm really paraphrasing here. I have to, and like, she, she would make like these fucking moves. And she was like controlling her space where, I, I mean, I, I, I was just sitting there like my, my, my fucking heart in my throat going, this, this woman is going to get eaten alive. Like I've, been in, the I've been in the going? open water with sharks without a cage. And uh, it's, it's oddly enough, very calming. It's not as scary as you'd think. Like for some reason, you can tell, you can tell when a shark is being aggressive. It, when a shark wants to come at you, I was, in the water, I was in the open water with a great white shark once. And it was moving with such intention that like, I, like almost like when you see a, a running back or when you watch, um, what's his name? Is it J Jamal, who's the running back quarterback for the Ravens? Oh, yeah. I, I, it's the offseason. I, I immediately That's forget everybody's name. Yeah. But when you see him. my pick to go to the Super Bowl last year. When you see him move, a shark moves. And when it's, when it's being predatory, it moves like that in the ocean. And then sometimes when you see, like, with blue sharks or, like, uh, or like Galapagos sharks, they're just, like, literally drunk frat boys just, ha. And you can grab them by the nose, move them over. But, man, great whites. We've, I've been in the water with great whites a lot, like a lot. And uh, that fucking animal is king of the fucking world. That animal's scary as fucking shit. You now, okay, now go watch killer whales eating uh, great white sharks. Dude, how about that? And then did you hear that the killer whale killed one great white shark and then they lost all sharks for the rest of the – like all sharks disappeared from this island because – one killer whale killed a great white shark. And they said it, it looked like it was playing with it, like it killed it and was playing with the body, like it was just having fun. What they do is, well, they're so fucking smart. There'll be like two or three of them. And what they do is they, they, they go from underneath or something. They drive it to the surface 
where it has no exit plan. And then they bite the thing's fins off. And it's just fucking brutal. It's just like, to see a great white shark scared. Oh. That's like when you see like one of the great boxes of all time, you know, eventually they get old and that young buck comes in and there's that thing late in the fight where you just see this guy who's never lost, has a look on his face you've never seen before. That's what seeing a great white shark getting uh, uh, hunted and seeing yeah. this thing like, you know, like looking over its shoulder, like, hey, we're just fucking around, right? Man? Every- <laughs> I know I act tough, but I know you guys are the tougher. Tougher, you know, all right, leave me alone. It was really, it, I don't know, it was weird. It was the first time I ever sort of rooted for a great white shark, unless it was uh, human beings. I mean, if it's going after a swimmer, I'm rooting for the swimmer, but if it's like fishermen and shit like that and people fucking yeah. with the fish, you know, even the people leaning over, putting their hand on his fucking nose, I want that arm to come off. We had a we had a guy in nerve damage. We had a guy in South Africa who had his pinky just it was like down to the bone, and I said we were swimming with great white sharks, and they said I said what happened, and he goes well you know I can take him and move their noses up when they come up to the boat I can push their noses up and he was doing it, and he said and one time I pushed their nose up and it moved and my finger just got caught in between two teeth and I pulled it out and it just ripped everything off of it. I went like, like a chicken wing. Oh, my nipples started tingling. I was like, no, thanks. Dude, when we went swimming with great white sharks in South Africa, I, the first time I did it, no, the second time I did it, the, we went in the water and the visibility was bad. So you would only see the shark when it bit on the cage at the last moment, much like a shark attack, it would just come from the dark and you'd just be sitting on the cage and you'd just see, whoa, and you'd be like, motherfucker. It was terrifying. Wow. wow. Oh, it was, there's a great picture. There's a great picture I'll send you of me in the cage with the shark biting onto the cage that shot at the, from the top of the boat. And it's just, huh, and you're, it is. And that was like fucking surreal. That's something I want to do, but I don't want the shark to get hurt or get stuck in the fucking cage. I just would like to go into the shit, be safe, observe it. I don't want to fuck with them and get them all riled up, but I know they have to, don't they have to do that on some level to get them over they there, do. right? For great whites, they lure them into the cage with shit, with bait. For the Galapagos, I'll tell you right now, one of the, in, in Holly Eva, the greatest experience I've had, ever had is North Shore Shark Adventures. They take you out a mile out, always every time i've been it's calm and there are probably 30 galapagos sharks those are sharks that are the size of a pickup truck and there are 30 of them just surrounding a cage just sitting around a cage hanging out i go with my daughters one time right I t- i've taken my daughters out twice so every time i go to Hol- uh, go to honolulu i do it it's the funnest fucking thing and it's it and they have a great uh hawaiian ice place like right next to there so you go there get a hawaiian ice get the pineapples on the ride back over at Dole Plantation, get back to your, oh, it's out of this world. So we go with the girls, get the girls in the cage, and, uh, and they get out of the cage, and as soon as they get out of the cage, a fucking huge sperm whale just breaches next to the boat, just, and the girls are like, whoa! And then all of a sudden it comes, and it comes underneath the cage, and we had just gotten out comes underneath the cage, goes right by the cage and just lands. And the girls are losing their mind. I was like, thank God we weren't in that fucking cage. We had been in that cage. At that time, I would have been shitting my pants, watching a whale coming straight up from the bottom. And you're just going, don't fucking hit me. Don't swallow me. But yeah, it, dude, Hawaii, I'm not Hawaii. I can't win. This band ends. The first thing I'm doing is going to Hawaii. First thing I'm fucking doing. <laughs> it's hilarious. The first thing I'm going to do is I, I think I'm just going to go to a cigar bar. <laughs> just sit down and just fucking, I have, I have, I got to be honest with you. I have really enjoyed not traveling. Yeah. After 30 years of being at airports and stuff like that, I've really enjoyed being home, but like I've had enough, man. So, I mean, I was on this thread last night, you know, when I was up at like one in the morning and everyone was talking about COVID and the whole fucking text thread was just people in their egos questioning scientists it was just like everybody just everybody just wants to be right it's just like why can't you just admit you don't have a medical degree yeah you just fucking do what they say you know I, I went with the walk today with my 
wife and kids. And like, there was just a couple of, they just fucking, you know, and they know you're looking at them. And I don't want to be the asshole being like, can you put a fucking mask on? But then you're walking by my kids. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. You're just fucking, you know, like, like they're, they're trying to have like the first class of quarantining. Like it doesn't quite apply to me. And I figured out these fucking angles. Like they just have to be fucking different. They can't just be everybody else. You know what I mean? Like just do this with everybody. And like, oh yeah, you guys are all sheep. I figured this fucking thing out. And, you know, as much as they're blaming Trump, it's like, I don't give a fuck who was in, pre in office. You can't, you can't, like, police people's fucking egos. You just can't do it. They got it all figured out, man. Last night, last night, I was skateboarding around, had a few beers, and I was like, I'm going to skateboard. I'm going to just try to get some exercise in, go for a nice long skateboard. Uh, I'm coming back, and I'm drunk, and I fall off my skateboard, and my flip-flops hit the ground. I didn't fall hard. I just fell forward, caught myself. But my flip-flops were there when they went clap, clap on the cement. And this woman <laughs> comes out and goes, will you fucking stop it already? And I'm like, excuse me? She goes, you, that's enough, enough, you're done. And I was like, I was like, I didn't know if she knew that I was drunk. And I was like, I'm just trying to get home. She was like, no, you're not. You've been out here all night. And I go, I, I know I haven't. She goes, what the fucking fireworks? And I go, I go, I'm skateboarding. She goes, how old are you? You're not skateboarding. I go, I'm 47. And she goes, you shouldn't be skateboarding if you're 47. And I go, hold on, wait, what are you? And she goes, you're not shooting on fireworks? And I said, no. And she goes, oh my God, just get yourself home. <laughs> that was fun. You know what? Because that was the point there where she realized she was wrong and she should have apologized and said, I'm apologized. sorry. And she just belittled me for being 47 and skateboarding. Dude, were you here last night with the fireworks? Yes. Dude, that was one of the best shows I've ever seen. So much better when it's not organized by our country. It, I mean, it literally, every year, like, you know, we go up on the roof. We sit there, I smoke a stogie, and we watch them. But, you know, we got the little ones, so I didn't do it this year. And, um, dude, it was like, it, and it just kept going and going and going and going. When my kid got up at, like, 4 in the morning, it was, like, quiet. I was like, oh, they finally stopped. Then I heard, brr, brr, brr. Boom! Yeah. My wife was in bed like, oh, God, they're still doing It's just like, you know, people had months and months and months and months to build up to it. It was fucking amazing. My tour bus driver stopped on our way from Hurricane back home, stopped in Vegas and got like $500 worth of fireworks. Told me, he said, in the middle of the night, look down towards Compton. It will be blowing up. And I looked out online and Compton was, I mean, better than any fireworks show I'd ever seen. Yeah, it was incredible. I had my daughter out looking out her window. And that's the first time she's been like old enough to understand them. Yeah. She thought they were amazing. And then I was like, all right, you got to go to sleep now. And then she was like crying. I had to come back in. What are you crying about? She's like, dad, you missing fireworks. I'm like, oh. I saw him, buddy. It's okay. Hey, I have a weird question. So when you have a boy, because I only had girls, when you have a boy, do they ask you in the hospital whether you want to get him circumcised? Yeah. And, or is that something you do after their bait? Like I think that's all that all, that's all up to you. So. But they say that when you have them, they're like, you want them to, and you're like, yeah, that's all that. that yeah. You got to decide yes or no. And there's all, you know, it's the, the same type of shit. All these questions. And you're like, I got to make these decisions. And then you look you, at your wife. You had your decisions all about that made way before you, it wasn't like sprung on you. You're like, Oh fuck quick. What are no, we no, no. We made, we made all of those decisions. I'm not going to divulge one way or the other. I feel like that's his story to tell. <laughs> and ladies, if you play your cards, right, you might just get that answer someday. <laughs> um, all right. I think that's it. I think we're out of time. Good. Hey, ha, Hey, my 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 non hat is off to you for going out there and everybody. Thank you, for everybody went out and showed up on Bert's tour, and uh, everybody had a good time and did it safe. Unlike those uh, couple of rebels over there, <laughs> fucking raw doggers. <laughs> raw doggers. Uh, <laughs> that's so on brand for the two of them. It's like oh, every it is. I, I love the both of them. That's what I love about Callan. You can't help but love him. But in his apology speech, he goes a fucking fist bump. Why wasn't I thinking? A fist bump. I put it right to my face. God damn it. <laughs> he knows the people want to see his physique. He yeah. had to go out and show it to him.
Yeah, I love him. I texted him the morning. He, I found out he got it. I texted him because I was nervous. He's like, buddy, you know, you got it if you got it. And I was like, really? He's like, symptoms. Well, here's the thing. I, I, I didn't because I, all I could think of was breaking his balls. And I was like, well, what if he gets a bad version and dies? Then I'm going to feel bad. So I'm waiting. If he doesn't die in the next 10 days, that's when I'm going to start trashing him. Yeah, I think they're fine. I think both of them are fine now. That's hilarious. Um, all right, and then that'll be the new angle. I mean, I shook it off in five days. Fuck yeah. old people. All right, I have no answers. Don't listen to me. All right, that's the podcast, everybody. If anybody's selling one of these. Oh, Jesus, just drop the phone there. I won't buy it. Right, look at that. How, that's like when you were a little kid. That's what your toy you wanted it to be. That looks like it. And by the way, if you're looking for a good beer, let me make sure. If you're looking for a good beer, food fight. I and thought that's a clown fight. Food if you want to see a stud on a fucking surfboard behind a boat, Bill. Yeah, I do. I want to see that. Watch this, Bill. Drop the rope. Oh, are you supposed to drop the rope? I thought you, you needed- Drop the rope and then you just surf on it. It's fucking funny shit, Bill. I'll tell you what, we're gonna You're do a- an athletic mega, man, Bert, and you know what? Mega. That little thing was brought to you by Heath. Heath, mine's melted because I have no air conditioning in this fucking house. Um, all right, you're in the witness protection house. Okay, we got to do a little read here before we go. Uh, dude, if you want to do that LA show, I'm down. All right, I'm going to set it up. All right, everybody, thanks again for watching another episode of the Bill Bird Pod Cast.